Hello viewers! Ever had your car start idling rough, losing power, or the check engine light just pop on for no reason? Well, to be honest, this could be caused by many things, but one very common is a bad EGR valve. And the good news? You don't need to be a pro mechanic to figure it out. So today I am going to show you how to test an EGR valve, go over the common symptoms of a bad one, explain what it does and how much it costs to replace. Alright, let's start with the testing part, because that's probably what got you here in the first place. Depending on your car, you'll either have an old-school vacuum-operated EGR valve, which looks something like this, or a newer electronic type with a wire connector on it. This is important to understand, as testing methods differ depending on which one you've got. Now, regardless of whether your car has a vacuum-operated or electronic EGR valve, you always start with a visual inspection. Find the valve. It's usually mounted on or near the intake manifold and take a good look at it. Are the hoses attached to it cracked or disconnected? Does the wire connector seem loose or you can see traces of corrosion on it after unplugging it? Do you see any carbon buildup on it or its ports? If you see any of this, it's quite likely the valve isn't working as it should and you need to take steps to correct the issue at hand. Replace the broken hoses, take care of the corroded connectors or clean out any carbon buildups within the valve using carb cleaner. Next, if you have an older car with a vacuum operated EGR, here's what to do. With the engine off, Unplug the vacuum line and hook up a handheld vacuum pump. Pump it up and watch what happens. The EGR valve should move and hold the vacuum. If it doesn't hold, the diaphragm inside it is leaking, meaning the valve is broken and has to be replaced. Now turn on the engine, let it idle and apply vacuum to the EGR once again. If the valve opens, the car should stumble or even stall. That's normal, actually, as you fully open the EGR and let too much exhaust gases into the intake, which then messes up the air-fuel mixture. On the other hand, if your car is a bit newer, it's more likely that it has an electronic EGR valve, and to test it, you'll need a diagnostic tool. So, if you have this device, the first thing to do is to plug it in and check the codes. In case of a malfunctioning EGR valve, you might see some of these. This alone tells you there's a problem with EGR. Not enough flow or too much of it usually means the valve is clogged or stuck, so it doesn't open or close as it should. Circuit malfunctions are usually caused either by wiring issues or the solenoid inside the EGR valve is fried. Also, if your diagnostic tool is a bit more powerful and complex, you can do a so-called actuation test. What this does is, it sends a command to the EGR valve to fully open or fully close, depending on what you've chosen to do. By doing so, you can monitor the valve's movement to see if something, suit buildup and gunk for instance, is obstructing it. Have in mind, though, that not all scan tools are capable of performing this. Most cheap OBD code readers aren't. Moving along, I must mention one simple, manual method, which can only be performed on those vehicles that have some sort of linkage that connects the EGR valve and the corresponding mechanism inside the intake. Here you can push this rod with your hand. It should move smoothly, not gritty or stuck. If it's jammed up with carbon, it's going to feel sticky or won't move at all. Lastly, I'd point out that many newer cars, especially those with a diesel engine, have an EGR temperature sensor, and this is something you can easily use to assess the EGR operation. With the EGR open, these values should rise to 500 degrees Celsius or higher, However, if they remain significantly below that, it usually indicates that the EGR is stuck or its passages are blocked with soot. Now let's talk about what you'll actually notice when your EGR valve is going bad. Because, let's be real, most of us don't test things until the car starts acting weird, right? First of all, you might notice the idle is rough. If the valve is stuck open, 
exhaust gases get dumped in while they are not supposed to and your idle goes all over the place. Also, a stuck open EGR valve might cause stalling as the excessive exhaust flow at low engine speeds chokes the engine and kills it off. And even if this doesn't happen, your car will be down on power because it's effectively not getting enough air to work properly. On the other hand, a stuck closed EGR valve could cause knocking or pinging sounds under acceleration. The reason for this is the combustion temperature, which goes up when the exhaust gases aren't flowing into the intake. Now you might find this confusing, but I'll explain why this happens a bit later. Next, we have the check engine light, which will almost certainly come up if the EGR valve is acting up. As said earlier, this will trigger various EGR related codes. Another thing that will take a hit when the EGR isn't working as it should is the fuel economy. Obviously, the engine that doesn't run optimally will burn more gas because the combustion is out of balance. In addition, since the EGR's primary role is to reduce emissions, you might get more harmful exhaust gases through the exhaust when it's out of action. To be honest, this is something you probably won't notice until you take your car for an inspection, where it might fail an emission test. You could, however, see a lot of black smoke from the tailpipe under load. Having gone through all the symptoms, let's briefly explain what the EGR valve, and in fact the whole system, actually does. Exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR, is an emission control device that, as its name might suggest, returns a portion of burnt gases back into the engine's intake. And by doing so, it reduces the combustion temperature and lowers the exhaust NOx content. From a mechanical point of view, the EGR consists of several pipes that connect the exhaust and intake, a valve that regulates the flow through this pipework and, in some cases, a coolant-based cooler that cools down the hot exhaust gases before they enter the engine. Now, the EGR valve itself is the key component here. It opens up or closes when the ECU tells it to, regulating the exhaust gases flow so they don't mess up the engine's operation. In the end, if you've tested the EGR valve and it proved to be broken beyond repair, the only thing left to do is to replace it, which brings us to the question of how much this might cost. Well, with prices usually ranging between 50 and 150 bucks, the older, vacuum-operated valves are not that expensive. On the other hand, a typical electronic EGR valve might set you back anywhere from $200 to $500 or even more for some models. As for the labor costs, this is a job that in most cases takes an hour or two, and to be honest, you might even do it yourself with some basic tools, assuming the access isn't too difficult. So there you have it, the EGR valve. Small part, big impact. But as you've seen, testing it isn't too hard once you know all the steps. If this video helped you out, give it a like, hit that subscribe button for more repair tips, and let me know in the comments if you ever had to deal with an EGR valve issues yourself. On the other hand, if you're having some different problems with your vehicle, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!